Okay, hopefully I got this mic is working today. I screwed it up last week. Okay, it's going to be a short lecture today because I want to get, get you guys doing a lot of examples because that's the only real way to become good at related rates. I know it's, you're groaning. I don't know why you're groaning. Related rates, basically the uh, whole topic is doing word problems. So you guys are going to have to become really good with English comprehension, right? This is basically converting an English problem into that of mathematics. This is uh, the conversion I've been telling you about sort of since day one. Okay, so here's our motivation. So a circle's radius expands at two meters per second. starting from zero meters. Okay, so imagine a circle starting from a, a point and like getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's right, just growing. Okay? How quickly is the area changing with respect to time? with respect to time. Have I used this yet? WRT? OK, so I'm just going to define that. WRT is a short form for with respect to. OK, so we have to think about it this way. Here's a circle. The circle has a growing radius. So I'm going to say the radius is a function of time. Uh, we know that uh, radius is a function of time. Uh, we know it's derivative, right? So I'm telling you that this is expanding at 2 meters per second. So that means the radius with respect to time is changing at 2 meters per second. OK, so what do we want? Okay. So the way that you read this, I know this is a derivative, right? So the, you, you would read this the derivative of r with respect to t. But another way of reading this is, how does the radius change as the time changes? Right? So remember, we have this notation, change of x over change of y. Uh, it's deliberate as to why this looks like this. Right? This is a change over some real interval. This is a change at an instantaneous moment. OK, so what is it we're looking for? Well, I want to know how quickly the area is changing. So that means I want to know what is the change of area with respect to time. That's what I want. So how can I relate these two rates, the rate of the radius changing and the rate of the area? Can anyone tell me any relationship between the area of a circle and its radius? Yeah. Yeah, we know that the area of this circle is pi radius at time t squared. Now what's the value I want? I want the rate of change of the area with respect to time. So if I take the derivative of this, what are we going to get? We're going to get 2 pi. Now what? What's the derivative? What comes out? Well, we're going to get rt. OK, 2 minus 1. But remember, chain rule. What else should be coming out of it? Well, let's use this notation, because we're taking it with respect to t. So what's the strategy for, take for doing chain rule? Outside than inside. Outside than inside, right? So here's, we just forget about this. We take the derivative of this, which just means a 2 comes down. That's what this is. And we subtract a 1 from 2. That's where that comes from. Remember, then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, this, this is basically the technique from implicit differentiation. Okay, so why is this helpful? Well, here's the, that's the value I want. Okay, so can anyone tell me, in order to get the rate of change of the area with respect to time, what, do else, what else do I need to know? They're in here, right? So I need to know RT and DRDT. Do I know either of those? Well, I know. 
dr dt is this. Right, so if we're increasing at two meters per if, if, if our velocity is two meters per second, it's not too hard to suss out that uh, at any given time t, we're at two t meters. Uh, we'll learn the actual association between this later. OK, so do I have enough information then to get dA dt? Well, I have this and I have this. OK? So what you should notice here is that when you're doing, uh, when we're taking derivatives of our equations, where we're getting implicit values out, remember this notion of implicit differentiation, what this is actually telling us is how the rates are related. Right, so imagine, we have this circle. Right, the circle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, as the radius increases. Now obviously there must be some type of relationship between how fast this radius is increasing and how fast the area is increasing. Right? Those two things have to be related. And this is how they're related. Right? The area is increasing with respect to t at 2 pi rt, the change of r with respect to t. That's how those two re relate. Rates are related. That's our motivating example for today. So you basically related rates is just about taking a word problem, converting it to math, and then doing an implicit differentiation. I'll show you a little bit more. OK, so before we get into word problems, I just want to practice a bit solving these types of related rates problems. So here's an example. Uh, let's say that x is equal to y cubed minus y. Let's say that the derivative of x with respect to t is 5. And let's say that the uh, oh, and let's say we want uh, the derivative of y with respect to t uh, at y equals 2. And you'll see why we need this at <laughs> soon. OK. So how do, I, how do I get the related rates from this? Right, well, I'm going to want what variable am I taking the derivative with respect to? Be careful here, because you just don't start here and take the derivative with respect to x. Yeah, we're taking it like this. We're ask, I'm asking you a question about how y is changing with respect to time, right? Which is not implicit in here, but like, so these variables don't necessarily have to stand in for numbers. These variables can be stand ins for functions of time, right? So I could put xt, yt everywhere. But the point is, if I take this equation here, and I just take the derivative of that equation with respect to time, and remember about my implicit differentiation, what do I get? I get dx dt is equal to 3y squared dy dt. This is all the chain rule. Minus, uh, yeah, dy dt. OK, so what do we want? We want this dy dt. So that is here and here. So if I just do a little bit of isolation. Uh, but before we isolate, it's, it's smart to plug in the values that we have. right? So we have dy dt is equal to 5. Uh, we know that y is going to be 2, so this is 3 times 2 squared. And I'm just going to factor this uh, dy dt out, which means there's a minus y here, so you get dy dt. This means that 5 divided by, what is this, 3, 4, that's 12, minus 1 is 11. So 5 elevenths is equal to dy dt. Everyone get that? That was just, uh, this is just the implicit differentiation that we've been doing. OK, so I'm going to give you a question to try while I wipe down the boards. So give this one a try. Uh, let L be this, x squared plus y squared square root. Let dx by dt be negative 1. And let dy dt be 3. And tell me what dl dt is at x equals 5, y is 12. So give that a go.
Pardon me? Does it get harder in second year calculus? Does it get harder in second year calculus? Yeah. I don't know. Depends. I, I don't know. Second year calculus is basically, uh, here's a vector. Now I'm going to show you how to do calculus with vectors. It's more or less the same thing. Uh, if you guys want more time, you want a lap? All right, I'll give you a lap. Don't mention the war. OK, so the first thing I'd recommend is writing L like this. right? We always want to drop rationals, because they kind of hide information. So I'm going to do this. If I take the derivative of L with respect to t, what am I going to get? I'm going to get, so remember, I abstract away this. I'm going to do chain rule. Forget about it. So 1 half comes down. Uh, and then I have to subtract 1 from 1 half. So I'm going to get minus 1 half that I put back in the thing. Now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. But remember, I'm taking the derivative with respect to t, t, right? So I got to apply chain rule to this. So I cover up x. I know I get 2 something to the 1. That something is x. That kind of looks like a prime. So I'm going to do that. But now I have to multiply by the derivative of x with respect to t. That's the chain rule. The same thing is going to happen here. 2y and dy and dt for the same reason, just a bit less detail. OK, so what do we want? Well, I, they said they want dy dt, or dl dt. That's this that I'm trying to isolate. So let's just go ahead and throw in um, our values. So this implies that dl dt is equal to what? 1 half, what were the values? 5 and 12? So it's 25 plus 144, that's 169 to the minus a half multiplied by 2x, so that's 2 times 5, that's 10. dx dt was what? 1, sorry, minus 1. Uh, and then we get a 2 times 12, that's 24. And then dy dt was 3. OK. So let's work this out. This is 169 is 13 squared. So this is going to be 1 over 13. So this is going to be 1 over 2 times 13. Multiplied by what? So this is going to be 72 minus 10, 62. So 62 is 2 by 31. So that's going to get rid of this. So I think we're going to get 31 over 13 in the end. If I did my arithmetic right, yeah. that's what I get here, yeah. OK, that wasn't too bad. Um, I'm just going to erase this. So you know, I prefer for you guys just to pay attention when I'm writing on the board, because there's sort of no real purpose in copying it, because I've given you my, my notes, which I'm already just copying off of. Plus, there's the videos. OK, so here's an honest to god related rates question now. So we'll do this one together, and then I'm going to give you one to try by yourself. OK, so just bear with me, because these are very, very wordy problems. OK, so water fills the pictured cone, and I'll picture it soon. Pictured cone. At 9 meters cubed per second. So, how fast is the water level rising when the water? is six meters deep. OK, so here's the challenge. We have to turn this question of English into this question. So you guys can do your mechanical stuff and just work through equations. But the hardest part of related rates is going from here to there. In fact, that's like mostly the problem. It's just converting this. You for these related rates problems, you need tons of practice. I printed out every single related rates problem from Thomas, and I'll hand them out after the lecture. 
So you just got to do as many of them as you can. The benefit of that is there's like not many related rates questions that I can come up with, right? So if you do all of those, you're going to basically have seen all of them, right? So it's a good idea. Okay, so let me draw you the pictured cone so it can be pictured. Here is our cone. Okay, and this cone is going to have radius 5. It's going to have height given by uh, 10 meters. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour water into the cone. All right, so we're going to pour water into the cone so that the water height, what am I doing? Oh my lord. Oh my god. I think I better just start over. Let's try it again. That's five. Then I want to fill up to here, maybe. So there's going to be a height coming through this. So this is going to be 10. The radius, so like this is the current water level when I'm filling this cone in. So this is going to be at, uh, we're going to say it's going to have height y, and we'll call this radius x. You can name them whatever you want. We could have called this h. We could have called this the interior radius. It doesn't really matter. That's why I want you to get comfortable swapping out variables. OK, so let's look at the problem statement and see what kind of information that they've given us, which is, that's basically what you have to do. You gotta, so I want to be able to write down these things. What we have and what we want and how they are related. Okay, so basically, your book gives you like nine steps. I think there's really these three steps. You need to identify what values you have, you need to identify what value you want, and you need to figure out how your haves and wants are related. You have to relate the rates. Okay, so let's see what, we, what kind of stuff that we have. We have water fills the pictured cone at nine meters cubed per second. So what value is that? Yes, sir? Okay, so if we say V is the volume in the cone, volume of water at time t, then what we want is the derivative of V. Well, we want to know how fast V is changing with respect to t. But we also need to specify when. Okay? Because in order to answer these questions, they need to stop the clock. They need to say at time 10 seconds, right? what is this value? They won't always tell you what, like, it's 10 seconds. They may give you other information. But all that other information is essentially knowing information when you stop the clock. So when is, how fast is the water level rising? Oh, no, sorry. This is not a want. This is a have. We have dv dt is equal to 9 meter cubes per second. And this is giving you a clue. These units are giving you a clue. Meter cubed is a volume. Meter squared is an area. Meter is a measure of distance, right? So meters cubed, that's a volume. With respect to seconds, that's how I go to here, right? This is the change in volume with respect to t. Whenever you see some, like this type of unit per second, that's always giving you a rate with respect to changing in time. OK, so we, we want, what do we want? How fast is the water level rising? OK, so what variable here is the thing that's measuring the water level? Well, let's go through each of them. Is it this 5? Is this 5 the water level? How about this x? Is this the water level? How about this y? OK. So I want to know how fast the water level is changing, right? the rate of change of the water level with respect to time at Water is six meters deep. So what are they telling us? What is this piece of information? <laughs> With respect to those labels. Yes, sir. Y equals yeah, we need, want to know dy dt at y is equal to six. OK, so how do I relate those two things? How do I, re like, what relationship do I get between y and the volume. Does anyone remember the volume of a cylinder? Yeah. One third pi r squared h. Yeah, so the volume of a cylinder, so volume of cylinder, 
cylinder, cone, my lord, cone. This is going to be, uh, with my labels, one third pi x squared y, right? This is the r, right? So this is the volume of the cone. This is the volume of basically the water, right? Of, of the water that's inside the cone. Okay, so is this it? Will this relate dv and dy if we take the derivative of this? Okay, go ahead and take the derivative of this with respect to t while I wipe down the other board, and we'll continue. Right, so really you should have, we should write this as v. Okay, so if that's v, this means that the derivative of v with respect to t, and th this is going to be a little bit, maybe more complicated than it seems. Okay, so what do we get? We get 1 third pi. That doesn't really change anything. And then what rule do I have to apply on the inside here? Can you take the derivative of this? Can you take the derivative of this? Do we have a rule that tells us how to take derivatives of things that are multiplied together? Yes. What is it called? Product rule. OK, so do we need to use the product rule in this situation? Yes. Whenever something's multiplied and those two things aren't constants, product rule comes into effect. OK, so it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second plus that all requires chain rule. OK, so let's try to do this slowly. So the first thing is x, so the product here is x squared and y. So the derivative of the first is going to be 2x dx dt multiplied by y. Derivative of the second times the first is going to be x squared times the derivative of y with respect to t. Does this make sense? OK, just make sure to apply the rules of differentiation faithfully. And you'll get the right answer. You just need a ton of practice. OK, so this is what I want to do now. So I want to circle the things that I want. I want this. All right. Uh, and what do I have? I have dv dt. I have y. <coughs> OK, but what else do I need? Yeah, I need x and dx dt and x. Can we get those? So don't give up if you, if you don't have all the information that you need. Are x and y related here? Similar triangles, but can we do it properly? Tell me the ratio. So remember, triangles, right? So we have two triangles. Maybe I'll write it down here in the interior of this code. You have this is 5, and this is 10. And we know that this is, uh, this is y, and this is x. So you, can you tell me how the, these values relate to one another? The only thing you have to remember is that ratios of similar triangles are equivalent. Right? So remember, Trig tells us that the ratio between this and this should be the same number as this divided by this. That's all of Trig, right? So we know that. Uh, 5 divided by 10 should be equal to x over y, which means that, well, first of all, we have, so this goes to a half. So we have a relationship y equals 2x, which tells us two things. First of all, we know that dy dx is 2 dx dt. This also tells us that x is equal to a half of y, which is a half of 6, which is 3. OK, so we know that dy dx is what? Did I specify? Oh, dy, dy, d oh, no. No, no, no. What am I doing? 
I'll have to do this with respect to t. dy dt is equal to 2 dx dt. OK, that's not too much of a mistake. OK, so what's dy dt? Do we have that? No, we want that. Uh, but we know that dy dt is 2 times dx dt. So can I get rid of this? Look, this is 2 dx dt. 2 dx dt is equal to dy dt. So I'm going to rewrite this with some of the new values we found. So dv by dt is what? 9. This is equal to pi thirds times, OK, so uh, this is going to be x, y. So what's x and what's y? So x is 3, y is 6. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more step in here, just so it's less mysterious. OK. This means that dB by dt is pi thirds. I'm going to rearrange. So we get 2, 2 dx dt. So we get xy times dy dt plus x squared dy dt. OK, so now what do we have? I have this value. I have x, I have y, I have x squared, and the only thing left is the thing that I want. OK, so if we solve this, you will find that dy dt is what? Well, we're going to have to put in the value. OK, so are you comfortable putting in the values and solving? OK, so I'm just going to give you the answer. You fill in the details. The details are also in the notes. Uh, but if you put in for this, I, I really should do the last line. OK, so we get 9 is equal to pi thirds uh, 3 times 6 dy dt plus 3 squared dy dt. And if you work this out, you'll eventually find that dy dt is equal to uh, 1 over pi meters per second. So try to be careful with your units here. I haven't decided whether or not we're going to deduct marks. Probably not, but maybe. Maybe. Any questions? So again, it's mostly the difficulty of converting between the problem statement uh, and the algebra that has to go with it. But the algebra is fine. Like, I'm, I'm very confident that all of you can do this part. Right? It seems mechanically you guys know what you're doing. What I want you to focus on is just interpreting these questions. Because if you can't get from here to here, your, the, your mechanics are going to be useless. Right? So you really have to gain competency at converting these types of problems. OK, another question. It's a shorter lecture today, because I, I want most of you to be able to work through this. OK. So here's another wordy problem. What time have we got? Okay, 10 to 12. <coughs> so the first thing that you should do, because we are not always going to provide you a picture, but well, you always should draw a picture, if, not, if one's not provided. So I'm going to ask you to draw a picture in this case. OK, so here's an, a question. A hot air balloon. Rising from a field. Is tracked by a laser pen. Frickin' lasers. Laser pen. Uh, 150 meters from launching position. At the moment, 
the tracking angle. So you know what I mean by that? You got someone standing with a laser pen tracking the air balloon as it goes upwards, and that's the tracking angle, okay? At the moment, the tracking angle is pi quarter. How fast is the air balloon rising? Given d theta dt, that is the tracking angle, is changing at 0 0.14 radians per minute. I want you to change these fractions. I want you to change these decimals back into fractions. It'll be easier to work with. Uh, OK. So what do we want? We want to do this. Determine your halves. Determine your wants. And uh, if you can do it, determine the relation. And I want you to draw a picture. So step one, draw a picture. Step two, determine your halves and your wants. because the picture will help you with the relation. Yeah. I'll give you marks for a picture. I remember when I was teaching in Vancouver that some student was furious with me because he filled up a whole page of like gibberish and his friend drew a picture and I gave his friend half the marks and I gave this fellow zero mark. Right? So a picture is a great way to demonstrate that you actually know what the hell is going on and that's really what we're trying to give you marks for. Is this person competent? What are they telling us that's correct? And, uh, and again, given that the whole Difficult part of these related rate questions is just interpreting them. Right. Pictures are a great place to start. Yeah. It always usually comes down to a triangle or something. OK, I'm just going to solve it. Don't worry, I got, I got like, I got a way more to give you, so don't be too afraid. Okay, so what do we want? Free stuff. When do we want it? Soon. Okay, so have is what? What do we, what do we have? We have that the tracking angle is equal to pi quarter. We have uh, that d theta dt. Oh, sorry. That's at an at. That's an at. So we want how fast the height is changing at this uh, when d theta dt is equal to uh, 14 over 100, which is 7 fiftieths. Okay? And the relation that we're going to use is going to be that of a triangle. So let me just draw the picture. Okay, so you have uh, a hot air balloon, and it's not going to be as nice as some of the pictures that you drew. But there's my hot air balloon. It is launching from the ground, so I'm going to call this h. The tracking angle is going out like this. At the moment, we want it at theta equals pi quarter. And we know that d theta dt is, what did I say it was? 7 fiftieths. OK, 7 fiftieths. OK, so first of all, uh, we also know that what? This is 150 meters out. Do we have h in this condition? Do I know the height of this air balloon if I tell you what the tracking angle is? How do I get it? Okay, so what special what what's trigono trigonometric function relates the opposite with the adjacent? Tan. Okay, so tan of pi quarter is going to be h over 150. Okay, so this means that h is equal to 150 tan quarter, tan pi quarter. I'm not going to evaluate it yet. Okay, so I also have actually 
that uh, H is 150 uh, tan pi quarter. Okay, so things that you have may also be hidden behind stuff. Just keep that in mind. Okay, but generally speaking then, how do I relate? So I want dH dt. What is the relationship between H and d theta dt? Tan, right? It's the same thing. So I know that at any given point in time, we have that the height is going to be 150 tan theta. At any given point. We did it here for one particular angle, but generally speaking, this is always true. If I take the derivative of this, what do I get? Derivative of h by derivative of t, that's going to be 150 secant squared theta d theta dt. Okay, chain rule and rules that we worked out last week. Let's see. We want this. Do we have everything else? Do we have theta? We sure do. Do we have d theta dt? We sure do. Okay, so this is going to be dh dt is equal to 150. Uh, so what is secant squared in this case? So I'll just remind you that uh, secant of pi quarter is equal to root 2. Okay, so given that, we get root 2 squared. So that's going to be times 2 times d theta dt, which is 7 over 50. And this should be in meters per second, right? Because it's a rate. Um, and let's just work it out. So 150 divided by 50 is 3, times 2 is 6, times 7 is 42. So I got very excited about this in the notes. Does anyone know why? None of you have read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's deeply disappointing, right? Read it. There's a book, and in this book, they're going on a search to find out the answer to the universe's most important question. So they build a computer to give the answer, and they wait a millennia to get the result. So they come, and they ask this computer, after a 1,000 years of waiting, thank you. We can now finally get the answer to the most important question in the universe. And the answer was? 42. The computer said it probably would have been a better idea to ask me what the question was. But the answer is 42. Right? Spoilers. It's a good book. You should read it. It's very funny. Yes, sir. Which two? The last line of DH by Secant squared of pi quarter. Pi quarter. Secant of pi quarter is root 2. Root 2 squared is 2. Huh? Uh, I think I only want to do one more, so I'll let you pick. I have one that's a ladder sliding down the wall, or it... no, I didn't even tell you what the other option was. Okay, so there's two questions left in here. I'm growing sand file. Well, that's not what I have. Okay, so look in the notes. There's a question about tangent lines to a circle. Like, try to work it out, and these full solution is there for you. Uh, due to popular demand, I'm going to be doing a ladder sliding down a wall. What was the other option? Uh, the other option was this guy. So it's, uh, I'm going to give you a circle. I'm going to give you a point that's falling down the circle. And we were going to investigate the tangent line hitting and this point moving left as that happened. You should do both. Yeah. Just want to do both? Yeah. Sigh. OK, but you're, you're going to try it, though. Yeah, we'll do a lap. You'll try it. OK, so listen up. Class, 
We're gonna do both by popular demand. Okay, so here's the question statement. I don't wanna really write it out, so please pay attention. Here's a circle, okay? This circle has a particle that's moving from this position. It's going down like that, so the particle is going to move along the circle. So at any given point, there's going to be a tangent line that goes through there, and it's going to land here. So let's call this point P, let's call this point Q, which ends up just being at x0 for x's. Okay, so I'm going to tell you some information. So actually, this is a, a circle of radius 10. Okay, it takes 30 seconds for P to move from 0, 10 to 10, 0 along the circle. How fast is Q moving towards the origin? Uh, when it is, when it is 20 meters from it, right? it being the origin. Give her a go. Can I give you the answer to this yet? One more time? All right, I was going to give you the answer because I'll, I'm going to give you tons more. We'll do the other example. Yeah. Okay, what do we have in this case? What do we have? Let's like investigate what they're giving us. So what, what is the only real piece of information that they've given in this question? Huh? Okay, so we have the x value, we have this value. From Q to the origin, we know at, when we're calculating things that this is 20 meters. Uh, we also, if I indicate that this angle here is theta, this actually is always a right angle. So I have uh, x is equal to, well, we want something at x is equal to 20 meters. But we have what? We have a rate. It takes 30 seconds for P to move from 0, 10 to 10, 0. So it takes P. 30 seconds to move from here to here. What does that mean? Well, that means the angle is changing. The change of the angle is, uh, well, in 30 seconds, how much do we move? <coughs> what is this movement? Which is what with relative to pi? Pi half. Yeah? So to move pi half radians, it takes 30 seconds. Is this d o by d t? Uh, theta, d theta by d t. This is the rate of change of the angle. Right? So actually, a way to look at this, if this is 30 seconds, what happens if I double 30 seconds? You get a minute. So what happens if I double this? You get pi radians per minute. Right, that's, that's the rate of change of this theta. Right, so we have actually the d theta dt is pi radians per minute. What do we want? How fast q is moving towards the origin? Well, that's just how fast dx dt is going. I want the rate of change of x. Make sense? How do I relate them? What is the relationship between x and theta? 
This is always comes down to triangles, more or less. Right? So we have this triangle. So what is the relationship between this side and this angle? Maybe that triangle is getting a little bit messy, so I'll just do this. All right, so this is the angle inscribed there. This actually is P. This is Q. Q. This is a right angle. So I'm telling you that uh, I know theta, and I know this is 20 down here. So what is what trig relationship is relating uh, this side with the rest of the triangle? Like we know that this is 10, right? So what is what's the relationship between x and the rest? Yeah. Just g theta by dx. Uh, g theta by dx. Or g by the way, yeah. Don't give me the derivative yet. Just give me the relationship between theta and x. Right. As the angle changes, the. Oh, do you have it? What is it? Cos theta is theta. Okay, so cos of theta. So there's this is theta. So remember the angles here. So. Opposite is this guy, adjacent is here, hypotenuse is here. So cos of theta is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Right, so this means that, uh, is that correct? Did I do this right? Should this be fine? Yeah, okay, that, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we get um, x cos theta is equal to 10. So that's the relationship. This is the relate st step. I managed to relate the thing that I want with the thing that I have. Can I take the derivative of this? What do I get? What rule do I need now? Well, I do need chain rule, but more than that. Product rule. I want you to, if you see a product, you have to use product rule, right? Because both of these are the unknowns. If I take a derivative with respect to t, it's derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, which turns this to a minus. This becomes minus sine theta, and I have to multiply by d theta dt. And the right hand of this equation becomes 0. Right? I take the derivative of, of that. OK, if I rearrange this a bit, what do I get? Well, first of all, what am I trying to, trying to get? I want this. Uh, I have this. I have theta. I have theta and I have x. So all I gotta do is sort of rearrange this a bit. So I'm gonna rearrange it like this. So don't, don't evaluate uh, until you really have to. I'm gonna move all of this to the other side. You're gonna get x d theta dt, right? With a sine theta in here, I guess. But notice this has cos theta attached to it. So all of this is actually gonna be divided by cos theta, which is what? What's sine theta cos theta? Hmm? Is it 10 or cotan? I think it's 10. It's 10, yeah. OK, so you get uh, x tan theta d theta dt, okay, which, we, which means what? Which means that dx dt, the thing that we're looking for, is equal to x 20. Now, what's tan of theta? Right, we need tan of uh, pi quarter. What's tan of pi quarter? Well, we gotta be we gotta be careful here. It's this it's this triangle, right, with x equal twenty. So I need and so if this is pi quarter, what's tan of pi quarter? Hmm? It's one. Well, shouldn't it be opposite over adjacent? This triangle, right? So it should be opposite over adjacent. Okay, you said one because normally we've we've made the hypotenuse of everything one, but the hypotenuse of this triangle isn't one; it's twenty. So everything has to be scaled accordingly. But anyways, it, it, I'm asking you what the relationship is on in this triangle. So it has to be ten squared plus something squared has to equal twenty squared. So that's going to be the square root of twenty squared minus ten squared. Okay, look. 10 squared, this squared gives you 20 squared minus 10 squared, so the 10 squared cancel, and all that's left is 20 squared. So that's, so then if I tell you this, what is, what is 10 of pi quarter? Again, it's opposite over adjacent. This is what, 400 minus 100, which is root 300. 
over 10, which is uh, root 3 times 100. So actually, this just goes to root 3, right? You take the 100 out of here, and it becomes 10. And those cancel. So what you actually have is root 3. And then d theta dt we have, and that's going to be pi radian per minute, which I won't write yet. So we're going to get a 20 pi root 3 dx dt. So that's just units per second. I guess maybe I specified meters. So this one was a little bit tough, right? A lot of information was hidden behind things. We have to remember, like you have to, ha like this is why I keep saying, we're not going to get rid of trig. We're only going to keep using it more, right? So you've got to be really, really comfortable using trig. But just remind yourself that whenever you're doing trig on triangles, it's the same triangle, right? This is the triangle that we were working with. Okay. Last question for today. It's the ladder question. So a ladder of length 10 meters slides down a wall if the bottom of the ladder bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at one meter per second. How fast is the top of the ladder falling, as in approaching the ground. When it is six meters from the ground, OK, so give that a try. And then I'll draw you a picture, and then you'll try more. And then that should be it for today. Uh, sorry. Yes. Um, could you just, I, I just want to see uh, the answer that you got from the previous. Yes. Well, that you, correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then I guess I have to post some more Weeby work questions today. Well, sorry, double rate. Sure, I can set, set you up. The point is, is that I'm like, I'm going to give you a triangle. I'm going to give you enough information to get the value that I want. But there's like really a limited number of ways that we can ask you questions like this. If you know how to implicitly derive, you should be good. That's all. That's all these really are. It's like practicing your. Yeah, but like. Yeah, but this is science, right? Here's a question of the world. Can you act, can you codify this into a statement of mathematics? That's science. Right? So that I don't apologize for. I could do this whole course without ever touching practice, but I don't think many of you would like that. Then we'd really be doing math. This, this one should be way easier than the one I, we just did. This is a very standard related rates question. But no, th this is a fairly simple problem of the world, right? To say, look, I've I have a ladder. The 
bottom is, I can measure the bottom's rate of movement. Can you then tell me what the top's rate of movement is? Or like the, the air balloon question. This is something that you could deploy in the real world. You could see, if I wanted to know how fast an air balloon is rising, I, we just worked out a way that you could do so by like just measuring how fast you have to do this. That was kind of amazing, right? Depending on how fast I have to raise my finger to track the air balloon, I can work out how fast that air balloon is rising. These are important things. And note that you need implicit differentiation to solve these problems. Right? So we're not teaching you calculus to torture you. It's useful. So let me draw the picture for you guys. So there is your wall. Here is your ladder. So your ladder is, what did I say it was? 10 meters long. So I'm just going to label this as the x direction. This is the y direction. So you can draw these. These are helpful. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to draw a mini arrow here. I'm going to say this is the change in x with respect to t, which we actually have is 1 meter per second. Um, we, we, this is the thing that we want. We want information about dy and dt. Uh, and what do we have? Well, we have that, uh, we want it at, so if this is y, we want, what did I say? We want dy dt uh, at y equals 6. Is that what you guys got? Well, that's just the picture that you should have drawn. OK, so did you finish it? Or do you want to, did you get that picture? OK, so what was the relationship then that relates x and y on a triangle? No, no, no. Don't go to derivatives, right? We first need a naked relationship. Then we take derivatives. Yes, miss? The most basic of all of them. This squared plus this squared is this squared. OK, so I'm just going to erase this question. That's why I should never use this board. OK, so on this guy, I know that we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 squared. That's Pythagoras. Which means if I take the derivative of both sides here, you're going to get 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt is equal to 0. Let's check this out. Do I have y? Yes. That's 6. Do I have x? Well, yes, actually. Right? Nothing's preventing me. If y is 6 here and this is 10, this is going to be the square root of, uh, what is it, 6 squared? Hold on. This squared plus this squared, yeah, 10 squared minus 6 squared. So I have x, actually. Do I have dy dt? No, that's the thing that I want. Do I have dx dt? Yeah, that's 1. OK, so that means I get what? I get 2 times, uh, what's 100 minus 36? 64. 64, so that's actually 8, isn't it? OK. So 2 times 8 times dx dt, which is minus 1. And it's minus, right, because this is a positive, this is the positive direction in x. Right? So we, this is going to be minus, right, because we're heading back in this direction. Actually, this should be minus 1. And then we get plus 2, what's y in this case, was 6. And then we get dy dt. This is equal to 0. Oh, no, 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 dx dt is 1, positive 1. What am I doing? My lord. 
No, no, yeah, this ladder is sliding this way, so it should be positive. Yeah, dy will be minus. We expect this value to be negative, right? Because this is the positive, we're, we're expecting to go down. So what happens if I rearrange this? You're going to get a dy dt is equal to, I don't know. OK, so 16. OK, so first of all, these twos cancel. Uh, one of these twos cancel with one of those twos. So you're going to get a 4 here and a 3 there. That's how you do arithmetic, right? It's not hard, as long as you don't combine everything, right? Because you just say, OK, all of these disappear. OK, so minus 4 thirds. That's the answer. OK, so I'm not going to write the questions on the board, because they're so damn wordy. Um, that's why I printed out these things. So for the remaining 20 minutes, why don't you pick one of them? Just try to do one of them, and then you can go. These ones really require a lot of practice.